How's it going, guys? It is 2.14 a.m., 11th of April. Here in Japan, we have a pass level, medium difficulty question for Repro for step one. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give me a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, element underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 34-year-old woman, tier history, inability to conceive. Menses range from 24 to 36 days in length. BMI 32. There is mild acne on her upper back and face, which the following is most likely to be seen as patient. We have an ultrasound of the ovary showing us cysts. This is polycystic ovarian syndrome. That's the past level component, but medium difficulty in terms of these answer choices. Okay, slightly challenging. Now, patient is at greatest risk for development of which the following. So before hopping into answer choices, I'll just give a very consolidated description of PCOS, okay, can be very confusing when you're first learning this stuff. You need to know that high BMI female who has irregular periods, that's called anovulation, okay? And if we just simply add hirsutism on top of it, then we call that PCOS. Now, let me explain that further. High BMI female means insulin resistance. Insulin resistance, for whatever fucking reason, can cause abnormal GnRH pulsation, where we get a high LH to FSH ratio. So if you're selecting individual arrows, you're gonna select an up arrow for LH, you're gonna select a down arrow for FSH. Some students think they're both increased, it's just the ratio is high, it's fucking wrong, okay? FSH is low. So you have a high LH to FSH ratio, and normally LH acts on the theca interna cells of the ovaries to make androgens, so LH is high here, meaning choice E, theca interna cell hyperplasia, is the correct answer. So that's why we get hirsutism. LH is high. Okay, not dramatic. FSH is low, which means that rather than getting granulosa cell hyperplasia, we get granulosa cell dysfunction. So follicle-stimulating hormone normally acts on the granulosa cells to secrete aromatase. So and if it's tangential, but normally we have the androgens from theca interna cells, and then they're aromatizing estrogens by the granulosa cells. But we have granulosa cell dysfunction in PCAS. Now, LH, which will normally trigger ovulation, when that occurs, because FSH is relatively low, our follicles are understimulated. So they're not going to be ready to rupture. We're not going to get a graphene follicle that ruptures. So these unruptured follicles are retained as cysts over the course of many cycles, which is why we have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, normally when a follicle ruptures and we get ovulation, the ruptured follicular remnant is known as the corpus luteum, which secretes progesterone. Now, choice A is wrong, early apopto apoptosis of corpus luteum, because we're not getting a corpus luteum in the first place because we're not ovulating, okay? Another very high yield point is that because the corpus luteum normally secretes progesterone following ovulation and we're not ovulating, it means we have low progesterone in a female who has anovulation slash PCOS. We call this unopposed estrogen, where estrogen over the course of the female's cycle slash life is going to be high relative to progesterone. Estrogen normally stimulates the endometrial lining. Progesterone normally limits growth of the endometrial lining. So we can get endometrial hyperplasia, increased risk for endometrial cancer. Very important, especially in 2CK, give you a very similar question, bleeding in a woman who's 50, who's overweight, and you just need to know that that implies she has history of anovulatory cycles, endometrial hyperplasia, risk for endometrial cancer. So obviously choice C is fucking wrong because I said FSH is low, not high. And then you say, well, what's going on with the fasting glucose 99 here? Sort of out of place. Yeah, I agree. I mean, clearly if we have insulin resistance, normal fasting glucose is 72 to 99 milligrams per deciliter, impaired fasting 100 to 125, two fasting greater than 126, diabetes mellitus, any one random glucose 200 or greater diabetes mellitus or an HbA1c greater than 6.5 DM. So this would be a normal fasting glucose. So in this, in a patient who has PCOS, we would expect 100 or greater, okay? You know, somebody doesn't really give a fuck. I just decided to throw that in here, okay? So in short recapitulation here, anovulation and PCOS, you need to know the mechanisms for you assimilating. Very, very high yield. You know the deal, make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.